in full zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises Inc. Half an day, everyone. Nestor Lacanto here with another edition of In Full Zoom. Uh, this week, we're going to take a look at the auto industry with, with members of the Guam Automobile Dealers Association. Please let me introduce uh, the president of GADA. Uh, he is the senior vice president of Triple J Motors, uh, Mr. Jay Jones. Uh, Derek Munya Kinata is the president and president and CEO of AutoSpot. And uh, Alex Hammett is the president of Atkins Curl. Half a day, everyone. Half a day. Half a day, Nestor. Let me just uh, start with you, Jay, and I have each of you kind of uh, go over what uh, the impact of the pandemic has had on uh, your particular business, as uh, you know, most businesses, uh, a few maybe have, have actually flourished during this pandemic, but most industries have uh, had their share of challenges. Uh, let me start with you, Jay. Um, how has Triple J fared? Uh, thanks, Nestor. Um, it's been quite the roller coaster ride, uh, I have to admit. Um, going into this back in March, uh, it seemed like the sky was falling, and uh, you know we we made some moves to to try and insulate ourselves and 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 uh, hopefully make it through what we thought was going to be a you know a long uh, a long slow period. Um, and then, uh, surprisingly enough for us. Uh, you know, the, the pandemic unemployment assistance money started coming out and the shoppers came back and uh, it uh, it appeared that, uh, you know, uh, people were were, uh, you know, getting these large lump sums of money. Uh, you know, I, I guess the fact that the, the assistance didn't uh, it took us it took us a while to get going and, and for the assistance to actually kick in. And there was some some people that were receiving some pretty big uh some pretty big checks from uh you know from the from the time that they were they were furloughed and uh so i think uh you know people saw this as an opportunity to put a big down payment uh, you know on the on the car and maybe that they had had been uh, deferring a, a purchase for a while and so we we saw a pretty good uh, surge of business uh once once those pandemic uh, uh checks started coming out and it's kind of ebbed and flowed and rolled uh, rolled since then uh, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, it's been kind of crazy, uh, in, in a lot of ways, you know, our business is somewhat diversified. And so, you know, we have businesses like the automotive side of things that are actually doing okay. Uh, but then we have a rent a car business, which, uh, you know, has never been worse. And so, um, it's, it's a lot of highs and lows, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's, I think for like, for like for everyone else in the community, it's, it's been a crazy, uh, a crazy ride. All right. And Alex, how about you? How are you guys hanging in? How's AK hanging in there? Yeah, thanks, Nestor. So very similar to, to Jay. Uh, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, as he kind of said. Um, for auto sales, um, initially, we took some pretty severe precautions on, on production orders. And then when the, as similar to Triple J, when the uh, stimulus money came out, we essentially sold out of cars. We sold out of Toyota um, and with obviously with disruptions in, in production globally, it's been really hard to get inventory. And, and at the moment uh, we're running extremely light and a lot of our vehicles are actually pre-sold. So for us, November, December will be a very strong month. Um, but the last three, four months have been a bit of a struggle for vehicle sales. Uh, service department's been really busy. Uh, we're only doing appointment basis only, but uh, we've been keeping capacity um, and keeping the techs busy. Um, body shop as well has been extremely busy. There's still a pretty significant amount of accidents still happening on the islands. As, uh, as you can tell, the roads are still quite busy. So our, our business uh, in after sales has been fairly resilient. So it's been, it's been interesting. Um, it's, been a, it's been a challenge for sure. There's been pretty significant changes in the banking industry, which put some uh, restriction on some financing. And uh, yeah, it'll be a very interesting Q1, I think. I think things will change here at the end of the year. All right, and, and Derek, uh, how's uh, AutoSpot holding up? You know, uh, since the beginning of this, we were actually fortunate enough to keep our service departments open. Uh, the governor was gracious to allow um, auto service side to kind of be a part of the whole front line. So kind of just switched our business to be more of a company that was out there to assist the community that needed help. It's been a huge roller coaster ride for us in terms of, you know, the ebbs and flows of 
customers uh, coming in and out of the dealership. I mean, we've been experiencing this drop since I believe like 2018 when North Korea faced the missile to the island. So, I mean, the industry has been seeing some of this uh, downturn, but this has been a trem- has, has had a tremendous impact on, on our bottom line. Um, you know, it, it forced us really to look deep into our entire organization and see what's absolutely necessary. Um, unfortunately, we had to furlough some employees um, that we deemed at the time was non-essential to our, our core business. Um, you know, we you know we had to streamline some positions and run our operations as efficiently as possible. Um, this is still, I mean, every day, you know, we I wake up, I'm blessed that we can keep the lights on. So, you know, we hope that, you know, with the vaccine, with the, the news of the vaccine coming in, in the next couple of months, we foresee the first and second quarter of 2021 to really uh, come back in our favor. And I think there's going to be a lot of pent up demand. And like Alex, uh, you know, we ran out of cars. We stopped order. We stopped production because nobody knew what was going to happen. So we don't have any trucks. I mean, you know, every canyon that comes through, it's pre-sold. Um, I have people going up to AK to look for Toyotas because we don't have any more canyons and vice versa. I'm okay. seeing Toyota customers come down here because there's no Tacoma. So, um, yeah, it's I got sh- I got <laughs> You got, you got, to- <laughs> <laughs> you got some landed. We got some landed today. So. <laughs> In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. That's interesting. Actually, that's uh, good. Good to hear that there there is some pent up demand still, particularly for trucks. Well, this is Guam, but um, I wanted to ask you guys. I know that um, a lot of um, the emphasis because of the COVID, the pandemic, uh, the virus has been on touchless, um, you know, interactions. But you know, to buy a car is a totally different thing. I mean, I, I know I speak personally. You want to touch it. You want to sit in it. You want to smell the new car, a smell, you want to take that selfie with it. So has the pandemic um, changed um, how you use um, the sell the cars? I know you sp- spend a lot of time um, and thought into your showrooms, for example, just to, to present the cars in the best way possible. So has the pandemic um, and the, the social distancing, how does that impact uh, sales and marketing? Let me start with you, Jay. Yeah, it uh, the pandemic has definitely uh, boosted uh, interest and attention uh, to online platforms uh, for for our website, our carsguam.com website. It's definitely seen a surge in uh, in interest and a surge in, in visitors uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, and uh, it has really helped us, uh, you know, communicate with customers, find out their needs, and and try and streamline the process to the point where when they actually do set foot in the dealership, you already have a plan, you already know what you're looking at, and you're not wandering all over together, and you're not exposing uh, the customer or the the salespeople to as much interaction uh, because you already have uh, a plan in place uh, for the most part based on what you've communicated online. So uh, it's definitely definitely helped uh, the situation. And uh, it's definitely increased uh, the number of uh, the visitors to our website. Alex, how about AK? Yeah, so for AK, we launched um, an online shopper program about, um, it's been about six months now. Um, We've launched it um, the latter part of May, I believe. And uh, the numbers on there just dramatically increased over the last, you know, three to four months. And I think what we're finding is a lot, uh, I guess it's similar to Jay, is we're finding a lot of customers are, are much more well-informed of the vehicle uh, before they come into the showroom. Obviously, with a, appointments only, uh, we're trying to limit the interactions in the showroom. And so uh, we've had to change and adapt a little bit. We've, we've increased some online sales associate positions. Um, we allow customers to take uh, test drives without our sales associates in the vehicle to try to limit the interactions. But um, 
I think in Guam, we're not there yet where people are, are definitely confident in buying a, a vehicle uh, 100% online, but it's definitely uh, trending that way. And I think we will see a, kind of an omni-channel approach over the next couple of years. Yeah, and Derek, I know you were one of the innovators and early adopters of uh, the use of technology in, in the auto industry sales. Uh, talk about um, how, the, uh, uh, how it's going now. Yeah, so fortunately, you know, we've had a strong online presence prior to um, this pandemic. So, you know, really our sales process didn't change other than the fact that customers weren't coming to the showroom after they scheduled their appointment online. You can do just about everything online. Um, you can do online 360 test drives. Um, you know, you can get financing. You can get pre-approved through our site at www.guamotospot.com. <laughs> um, you, you could do everything and we, we had this prior to the pandemic um, but really what we're, where we had to change was when the customer came in right whether it's through service or whether it's uh, through an appointment um, you know we had to make sure that they were safe and, and you know, not putting our employees at risk so we have facial scanners in the front to get their temperature if they're above a certain temperature we you know we ask them to <laughs> kindly you know go back to their car or, sanitizing everything the customer touches you know the office is uh, the entire showroom is sanitized um, every two or three hours during the day every time a customer touches or sits down at, a, at one of our tables we're sanitizing it so just you know adjusting to those uh, new normal now is is really you know been a challenge for everybody you know, wearing a mask everywhere you know talking and, and trying to talk to a customer with a mask on gets extremely uncomfortable um, and now we have plexiglasses on our, on our negotiating tables. And, you know, that's been different because you know, it seems like you're talking to somebody that's, you know, <laughs> somewhere else. So it's been a challenge for everybody. Yeah. Uh, Jay, you mentioned earlier that um, you did get a, a CF boost in sales uh, when the uh, federal um, assistance came in. Um, we're not sure uh, if Congress is going to follow that up. Hopefully they will. Um, but I wanted to find out, um, do you think a prolonged um, uh, economic uh, downturn uh, is going to, going forward, for example, you know, they used that money to buy or maybe put, put a down payment on a car. But if, if it's a prolonged um, economic downturn, are you concerned about repossessions or people being able to afford those cars that they bought from you? So we're always worried about uh, uh, you know repossessions, uh, and, and this is this is no different. Um, I think what gives me a little bit of confidence is some of the things that I've heard from our friends in the banking industry that say that uh, that a lot of they're they're seeing an increase in savings rate. Their their savings uh, uh, numbers are are up. A lot of people appear to have put some of this money aside uh, for rainy day, which is which is encouraging to see. Um, I, I feel like uh, a lot of thing, a lot of what we've seen is uh, people getting getting pandemic assistance checks, uh, and maybe maybe they're on furlough, maybe they don't they don't have a full time job, but they live in a household where there are people who have a full time job and who are still working. You know, there's still a ton of people out there who are still working full time jobs. So, you know, maybe they they combine their their uh, assistance check with uh, you know with their family member who has a full time job and, and they get a new car for the for the household. I think that's what we've seen a lot of uh, in the last uh, six or eight months. And uh, so, hoping if that is the case, that uh, that they will be able to pull their resources and 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 make it through a prolonged. Uh, period, and we're also hoping that the that the federal government will will come through with some more assistance uh, sometime in the near future, and uh, and help us all yeah. make it through. Uh, Alex, same question. Uh, what are your concerns about a protracted economic slump? So, the banks back in say March or April had had allowed six months deferrals for a pretty significant amount of uh, new car buyers on the island. And they backed that with another three months deferral. And so I think uh, Q1 will be very telling of, of what kind of the auto market is gonna, what's gonna happen in the auto industry because um, you know, the banks are probably not going to allow another extension on automotive loans and unless there's some federal relief coming in. And it's a pretty significant amount of 
of consumers. And with the holiday season approaching, uh, we're just hopeful that some of these consumers are, are saving their money, their pool of money. Um, otherwise, we'll probably see a, a surge in repossessions, probably the end of Q1, I would assume, um, which isn't, isn't good for the industry. Obviously, it, it makes the banks tighten up with their lending. Um, it, it also uh, puts a lot of derogatory credit into the, into the, into the local market. And so we always kind of plan for the worst, hope for the best, but um, we, I, I don't think we really know until probably the end of Q1 next year. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. Yeah, how about, how about you, Derek? Uh, what's... Uh your concerns uh, about possibilities I'm, of repo increase? I'm, I'm closely monitoring. Um, the bank send me letters every day um, requesting to extend uh, customer deferrals. And, you know, anytime you get that email from, you know, I don't want to mention any names, but <laughs> you get an email from so-and-so at, at a bank. And yeah, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not, not for the customer, but from, from the <laughs> loan officer. So when you get that email from the loan officer, you guys start to get nervous, but I'm monitoring that closely. Um, and I haven't been seeing as much come through. So I think a lot of people, like Jay said, are saving their, their pandemic unemployment assistance. So the banks are telling us that savings are going up. So now people are in a position to make those monthly payments. Not too many requests for deferrals have been coming in. But, you know, like Alex said, the first quarter of next year is going to be really telling. And, you know, we hope with President-elect Biden in there that, that $3 billion stimulus. And I believe the governor will be issuing out letters to the Biden administration requesting for additional assistance for the territories, most especially Guam, because we're heavily impacted by tourism. Yeah, uh, we're definitely going to need uh, that stimulus. Absolutely. All right, let's talk about something more positive. Uh, Jay, uh, what are some of the... the uh, what are some of the design trends that uh, folks can uh, look forward to? Oh, wow. Uh, design trends. I, you know, like the guys are, are saying, everybody loves trucks on Guam and, and, and it's no different now. Uh, it seems like, uh, you know, we've got the we've got the new Ford Ranger. So we're excited about that. And uh, we have several of those in stock. And, uh, you know, Trucks and SUVs, you know, it's just, it's the, it's the future, you know, it, uh, it's harder and harder to sell a sedan these days. Some people, you know, love, uh, love their sedans and, uh, and it fits their lifestyle, but uh, it's becoming harder and harder to find sedans uh, in the, in the manufacturer's lines up. So SUVs and trucks are, are appear to be the future. And then uh, as we go further, uh, you know, EVs and, uh, and hybrids uh, appear to be, uh, making some strong uh, strides as well. All right, and, and Alex, how about you? How about your product line? What, uh, what would you uh, out to the, the folks out there who might be interested in buying? Yeah, so we have, uh, for the Toyota lineup, we'll have um, a new Venza coming out next year, which is kind of a crossover um, into the market. We're also gonna be coming up with a, uh, the new Corolla Cross, which is a small SUV. And in Guam, uh, the most popular segment is is the small SUV segment, kind of where our CHR and RAV falls. And, and that segment hasn't seen such a dramatic uh, fluctuation in it during the, the pandemic. But uh, 2021, um, you know, Lexus, um, again, um, is doing facelifts, uh, really, you know, smart, sexy cars. BMW just launched a new uh, electric SUV, which is the iX. Uh, which will be going into mass production here shortly. And then Toyota as well, um, just pretty much across the whole line, there's going to be some good facelifts. Um, for us, we're going to be shifting a little bit more focus on to hybrids. Uh, we're going to bring in more hybrids uh, between now and 2023 um, and push kind of uh, the hybrid line um, into the economy. The hybrid, um, that would be... Um, uh electric cars with um, also the ability to put gas in, right? Is that, is that what you're Yeah, so, so Toyota, 
Toyota has is kind of taken a different approach than some other manufacturers like Tesla. And Toyota won't be mass producing fully electric vehicles until 2025. Um, but the hybrid, which is uh, large ba- large scale batteries, um, with with petrol. Um, is still their main focus, and we're going to be shifting that into uh, 2025. All right. And Derek, tell us a little bit more about what your product offering uh, is going to be going forward. Well, we're excited because General Motors is moving towards a fully electric lineup in the next five, uh, three to five years. I know in 2021, we'll be releasing the fully electric GMC Hummer. Uh, GMC now um, owns the uh, Hummer brand and um, they're launching or they've already launched it, but we'll be getting the first few models, hopefully by second or third quarter of 2021. And that's, I mean, that's 1,000 1, horsepower, 11,000 pounds of torque, uh, crab control. I mean, it's, it's a, an amazing truck, 360 uh, miles per, uh, per charge. Uh, you know, one of the first trucks to, to come out to the market we're excited about that on the Mitsubishi side. We're extremely excited about the all new redesigned um, Outlander. And um, it's bigger, it's better, it's more fuel efficient. We're excited about that product coming out in the market. And, and really just, we have a whole lineup of redesigned cars coming in 2021. So, you know, that with the stimulus, with the vaccine, I think 2021 is looking really good. And I can't wait for it. Can't wait to get this whole year out of the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, energized by your optimism, Derek. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. Uh, finally, gentlemen, let me just uh, have you guys take a, the, the big picture, um, the impact uh, uh, of the pandemic on the global auto industry. You guys mentioned a little bit about, I think it was Alex who was talking about some inventory issues, production issues. Um, if you were to look into your crystal balls and look at uh, 2021 and maybe a couple of years um, Further, um, what is going to be the lasting impact of this uh, pandemic on the automobile industry, and you know what what will we see um, of that impact here in Guam, Jay? Wow, um, you know I know a lot of manufacturers have had inventory issues uh, trying to keep up. Uh, I think everyone uh, when initially when the when the pandemic hit, everyone kind of froze. And said, uh, you know, uh oh, what's what's this mean? Never been through this before. How do we how do we handle this? And I think most people's reaction was to just freeze and stop everything. And um, which turned out, you know, not to be the right thing to do when it comes to the automotive industry. Uh, and uh, I think we all did it uh, to some extent. And um, so I think I know with a lot of our manufacturers, they're having a hard time meeting uh, the demand in some of the segments and some of the, the models. Um, I think that probably is going to take a little while to work out. I think if we get another federal stimulus package, I think we might see another uh, surge in in uh, in auto auto sales, which uh, might make that a little more uh, inventory situation a little more difficult. But yeah, I wish I had a crystal ball and I could tell you <laughs> what the future holds. It uh, you know I've, I've been wrong uh, a lot the last uh, eight nine months, and uh, you know so I'm I'm definitely. Uh, you know, not seeing the future clearly, <laughs> clearly. but uh, yeah, that's all I got. <clears throat> all right, Alex, what, what do you think? I think on a global scale, you know, you can't, you, you can't build a car without one missing part. And a lot of the OEMs are trying to diversify their plants and production facilities because as you know, several countries have gone in and out of lockdown. And so like the UK, for example, now is, is in lockdown. And so, for us, uh, we've just been working really, really closely with our OEM partners, making sure that you know we can fulfill the allocation and, and kind of move and shake production cycles to either pull production forward or to push it back. But um, yeah, no crystal ball here. I, I think it's going to be continue to be a challenge through 2021. Uh, 
And as I said, it's just, it's really focusing on uh, production plans uh, here now today where you can, uh, because next week, you know, you, you could easily receive a, a notice that, you know, a plant shut down or, or parts are on back order. And it's just, uh, it's an ongoing game. Yeah, that supply chain, uh, we, we usually forget that it takes, and, and, and the car is built from, you know, parts from all over the world and, and assembled. And I, just a quick question. Um, do you think it's going to impact um, new car sales versus used car sales? Or, or is it going to, the ratio that you typically see is going to pr pretty much remain the same? You know, the last three months in Guam have been interesting because they've been fairly stable at around 300, 350 50 units and, and used cars has been about 200 units the last the last three months. And I'd like to think that that's the, the kind of the bottom of the barrel of where it's at. But um, I, I think we're in Guam, uh, we're likely to see kind of a resurgence of used cars. Uh, there's going to be a lot of used cars coming into the market, I think. Uh, it's a bit cyclical in Guam as well. Um, so I think we're looking at 2021 to have uh, a little bit higher ratio of used to new than say 2020. All right, and finally, uh, uh, Derek, what's your uh, big picture view of the auto global auto I'm, industry? I'm definitely not looking into a crystal ball. We're, we're gonna plan our 2021 budget and we're gonna stick with it. Um, we're, we're gonna plan for the amount of units we order and stick to that. I know there's gonna be a huge demand uh, in certain segments for vehicles. I don't wanna get caught again. Uh, I, I've been in that position where, you know, the demand was so high, we ordered five months later, car landed, market was gone. So we're just going to stick to our plans, stay as you know agile and uh, lean as possible, because although, you know, we're optimistic about 2021, it's really a crapshoot at this point. You never know what's going to happen. This virus is morphing. I mean, you know, what's, you know, what starts to um, look like light at the end of the tunnel, you look closely and it's a freight train so you know i don't ever want to be caught in that position again and, um you know it was really scary in march and april april was extremely scary for us it was one of the biggest losses we ever undertook and you know i'm a small local business i don't have big backers um in other countries i i i run this operation on my own and the funding comes from you know my my savings and, you know if anything goes south it's it's my butt so uh, we're going to stick to our plan in 2021 and just be as, as uh, lean and as nimble as, as possible. Yeah, that's uh, one thing about this pandemic. Uh, if, if anything, it's been very unpredictable. But uh, I'm glad to, to know that you guys are hanging in there and that, that uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And I appreciate Lights your time. Lights are still on here. <laughs> <laughs> Lights are still on, Derek. All right, uh, Jay Jones, a Triple J, Alex Hammett, Atkins Curl, and Derek uh, Munya Kanata of Autospot. Thanks, gentlemen. Best of luck uh, for the holidays and into the new year. 2021 is almost over, so hang in there. Uh, I'm Nestor Lecanto. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll see you again next week on In Full Zoom. Thanks, Nestor. Bye, guys. Bye, Jay. Bye, Alex. Bye. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc.